jump in and start making the shader, let's take a look at the textures. I started making my snow shader by downloading a set of textures from Quixel Megascans. Now I'm not going to be giving these away today because they're not mine, but you can download similar textures from any material source library such as textures.com, the Substance 3D Asset Library, Quixel, or any other source. You could even create your own textures using a photogrammetry workflow that I may cover in a future series. But what I want to talk about first is how we can take the original textures and significantly reduce the amount of texture memory we're going to use. I downloaded this set of textures at 4K resolution. They were even available at up to 8K resolution, but I knew that that was massive overkill, so I just went with 4K. So these are the four textures that I got. A color texture, a normal map, an AO texture, and a roughness map. And so, and these three textures down here at the bottom are the textures that we're actually going to be using in our project. So what I want to do is show you how I got from these massive 4K textures to just three textures where the largest is uh, 1024 and these other two are just 512. So first of all, taking a look at the color texture, even when I zoom in, there's almost no detail going on here. I mean, there's just some really subtle detail and I decided to just get rid of this color texture. And what I did is uh, in Photoshop, I just sampled the texture and I took a look at what color it is. And it's saying it's about uh, 215. And so I'm just going to use a solid color 215 in my shader. So just going to ignore color and just say that snow is 215, 215, 215 uh, RGB. All right, let's take a look at our normal map here. The thing that I notice about the normal map is that there are two different scales of detail. There's a set of detail that I can see uh, at this zoom level, which are these kind of large wind blown drifts. And then if I zoom in more, there's kind of this extra chunky detail um, that I can only see if I'm looking really closely. And so what I'm gonna do with this data is I'm gonna go ahead and scale this 4K texture down to just 1K, to just 1024. But then I'm gonna zoom in to a specific section on this map uh, that contains a, a spot that pretty well represents that uh, really tight detail here. And I'm just gonna take a little square of that and turn it into a detail normal map. So that's what I've done down here. You can see that I've put the red channel, actually, let me zoom in here a little bit. So I've put the red channel and the green channel of my normal map in here. I, I reduced them down to just 1K. And then I took a little square of the full resolution detail from my 4K texture, and I made it into a separate normal map here, which I'm just calling uh, my detail map. And what this allows me to do is separate out the large details of my normals from the really tight details. And so I can represent the data that's being shown here in a 4K texture with one 1K texture and one 512 texture that I'm just gonna tile across the whole thing. Once we get into making the shader, I'll show you how I can combine this 512 detail texture uh, normal uh, with my 1K large detail normal map and basically get the same amount of quality with one 1K texture and one 512 texture that I would be getting with a full 4K texture. That is a really large amount of savings that I can make just by separating out the large details from the tight tiling details. Okay, so the other two textures that I have here are my ambient occlusion texture, which I put into the blue channel of my normal map. And then my roughness texture, which I put into the alpha channel of my normal map. Now you'll notice here that the roughness is mostly white, meaning it's a really rough surface and I've inverted it. And now it's mostly, it's, it's very close to black. And the reason that I inverted it is because unity needs smoothness 
while Unreal needs roughness. So I made this particular texture for Unity, but if I was making it for Unreal, and I did make one that I'll show you in Unreal in a minute, I need to invert my roughness to get smoothness. And the other thing that I need to do is invert my green channel because Unreal has green channel normals that appear to be lit from the bottom where Unity uses green channels that appear to be lit from the top. So I need to invert my roughness for smoothness and I need to invert my green channel um, because those are the two differences in textures between Unreal and Unity. All right, so you can see here, I've gone from four large 4K textures down to just one 1024 texture uh, and two 512 textures. Now this texture I haven't talked about yet, so let's let's go over this one. This is the one that I'm gonna be using to generate the sparkles in my shader. So let me show you how I made that. First of all, I just started out with a new texture that's 256 by 256. And the first thing that I wanna do with this texture is set it to uh, 127, 127, so just a middle gray value. So there's my middle gray. And then I'm gonna add some noise to that. So I'm gonna come up here under Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And I'm just gonna add 25% noise, Gaussian monochromatic. So you can see what that's done is just made every pixel a different shade of gray. Now, in order to get these uh, sparkles like this, all I did is come up to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I just grabbed the Levels tool here on the left and slid it all the way over to the right till about 233, and then I grabbed the slider in the middle and tweaked it just a little bit like that. And now this texture is 256, so I scaled it up to 512. So I'm gonna make it 512, but I'm gonna set my scaling type to nearest neighbor, and that will keep my pixels square. So now I've got a 512 texture uh, with just a little bit of, uh, just, a, just a little bit of sparkly pixels that I'm gonna use for my sparkle effect. Okay, let's jump into Unreal first, and I'll show you how to create the, sh the snow shader there. And then I'll we'll switch over to Unity and I'll show you how to create it in Unity as well. All right, so here we are in Unreal. And the first thing I wanna show you is the textures that I brought in. So here is my snow detail normal map. You can see that it's 512 by 512. And I have set the compression settings to normal map. Next, we have our main normal map. And this is the one that I've packed the ambient occlusion into the blue channel. And I've also packed the roughness into the alpha channel. And you can see here, I've not set compression settings to normal. I just set it to default uh, DXT5. So the format is set to DXT5. And the reason that, of that is if I set it to normal, I can't store data in the other channels. And so I've just gone ahead and uh, saved it as a standard DXT5. But it is important to make sure that you turn off sRGB so that the data is stored in linear space. Okay, so that is my main uh, normal map. And you can see here, I've called it snow NOR, that stands for normal occlusion and roughness because I'm storing the occlusion in the blue channel and the roughness in the alpha channel. All right, and then here is my sparkles texture that I created. And you can see here that I've set the compression setting to grayscale R8. And that's because I'm only using uh, one of the channels. So it's just using the red channel um, for this grayscale data. Okay, let's open our content drawer here. And I'll just scroll down to the bottom of my library of materials, right click and create a new material. And we're just gonna call this one snow. So I'll go ahead and open it up. And now we're ready to build our shader. Well. The fun part of the shader is the sparkles. Uh, so let's let's create the sparkles first. We need a texture sample node. And so I'll bring that in. And for the texture that we're gonna be using, I can just search for sparkles because I called it snow sparkles. So now we're sampling the sm snow sparkle texture. I can just pass that into the base color. You can he see here that I've got a bunch of like white uh, randomly colored grayscale pixels. Let me just adjust the 
field of view here so that it looks a little bit nicer. I always like to set that field of view of the preview to 50 instead of 90. Okay, we want to tile these sparkles a little bit more. So I'm going to add a texture coordinate node. And we're just going to multiply the texture coordinates by three to tile the sparkle texture three times across our UV space. Now, the problem with this set of sparkles that I have here is that they're static. They're not actually sparkling. As I move the camera around, as I zoom in and out, these sparkles are just saying static on the surface. And we want to fix that. And so what I'm going to do, actually first, let me adjust these just a little bit. I'm going to add a power node here. And we're going to raise this to the power of three just to adjust the contrast of the sparkles a little bit. So I can wire this in. You can see that I've made the 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 darker sparker sparkles even darker just to isolate the the brightest sparkles that we're dealing with. Okay, now this method that I'm using to make these things sparkle is a little bit of a novel method that I came up with. And if you don't like it, you know, you're free to use something else, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. What I'm going to do is take my texture sample node here with my sparkles and we're going to apply this sparkle texture in screen space. And so in order to do that, I need to grab the screen position node and then we're going to take the screen resolution node as well. So what I'm doing here is creating texture coordinates. Right now, this, this viewport UV coordinate here will give me zero to one across the entire screen. And that's what I want, but I want to scale it by the size of the texture itself. So I'm going to take the, oh, whoops, I grabbed the wrong node here. I actually need the screen resolution. So this is going to give the number of pixels across and down on the screen. And I'm going to divide that by the size of my texture. And so I know that my texture is 512 by 512. So I'm going to divide my screen resolution by 512. And what this is doing, and then I'll multiply by that value with my screen position. And so what this does is it gives me UV coordinates that allow me to map this texture pixel for pixel to the screen uh, that I'm using for my project. So I'm going to pass these UV coordinates in. And now let's take a look at what this version of the sparkle texture looks like. So what's happening here, as I move around, you can see that the pixels are staying put in screen space. They're applied in screen space instead of being stuck to the texture. So as I zoom in, you can see more of and more of the pixels that are being applied in screen space instead of being uh, just stuck on the surface in UV space. And so what I can do now is take my screen space version of the sparkles and my UV space version of the sparkles and multiply them together. And so what this does is wherever the surface, the UV sparkles align with the screen sparkles, that's where a sparkle is actually going to show up. So as I move this around now, and I hope this is coming through and that the YouTube compression doesn't just crush it. But what this is doing now is creating this sparkling effect as I move the camera around. When I stop the camera, the sparkles are fixed in place, which is what actual snow sparkles do. But as I move around and as I zoom in and out, you can see that the sparkles move. And that's because the screen space sparkles are aligning with the UV space sparkles uh, and showing the sparkling data through as it moves around. Now, there is one problem with this, and that is, um, actually, you know what? I'm supposed to put these sparkles into the emissive color socket, not the base color. So I'm just going to make that change really quick. And the one problem with doing this is that even in light directions that are completely opposite the main light, I'm still getting sparkles here 
on the complete backside facing away from the sun, I still get sparkles here. So in order to fix that problem, I need to create another mask that's based on the light direction. So I'm going to add atmosphere sunlight vector. That's the node that I want. So this is going to give me the vector that's the direction of the sun. And if I take this and do a dot product with the normals, uh, vertex normal world space, what this will do is give me a mask that's facing in the direction of the light source. You can see that I've got this mask now where it's dark on the side of the model that's facing away from the light and bright on the side of the model that's facing into the light. Now I do need to adjust this just a little bit. So I'm gonna add a saturate and then I'm gonna adjust the contrast by adding a power. And once again, we're gonna raise this to a power of three. So now you can see I've softened up my mask a little bit and pushed it more toward the light side. So this is a mask that masks off the bright side of the model. And I'll just go ahead and take this and multiply it by my sparkles. And the result of this will give me sparkles only on the lit side of the sphere and not on the dark side of the sphere. You know what, I think we can see things a little bit better if I set my roughness to one, just to get rid of that specularity that we're seeing. Okay, so now if I zoom in here, you can see I've got sparkles on the lit side of the sphere and nothing on the dark side of the sphere. Pretty cool, so that's how you create sparkles for the snow. Let's go ahead and set up the rest of the effect. So I'm gonna move the sparkles down here. And now we need to add our, let's do the normal map next. So we'll add another texture sampler and I'm gonna drop this down and we'll do a search for snow. Looks like I got a couple of other snow textures in the, my library here as well, but I'm gonna pick snow N-O-R. Now this texture, uh, as we took a look at before, this texture is not stored as a normal map which means that I need to manually unpack it. And so in order to do that, I'm going to multiply by two and I'm gonna subtract one. And I've done this a ton of times in these tutorial videos, but again, uh, just to explain this, what it's doing is taking a, our range that goes from zero to one in the texture and expanding it to a range of negative one to one so that it covers the, the full range of a vector. So multiply by two, subtract one, and then the last thing that we need to do is figure out the Z coordinate or the Z component of the normal. And the way that we do that is by using the derive normal Z node. And this derive normal Z takes the X and the Y, and it does uh, just a little bit of math to calculate what the Z of that normal is. Now I have a good normal that I can wire into the normal socket. And you can see I'm getting some cool looking normals on my surface now. Okay, now the other thing that we need to do is bring in our detail normal map. And so I'm gonna add another texture sample here. And we call this one snow detail. And we did save it as a normal. So you can see my sampler type is set to normal here which means we don't need to manually unpack it like this. We can just directly use it as a normal. Um, before I use it though, I do need to grab my texture coordinates and we're going to tile the texture coordinates a couple of times uh, just so that we can have this as a detail normal. In fact, I'm gonna tile it eight times and I'll pass these UVs into my texture sample. And now I can combine my base normal with my detail normal. So in order to do that, I'm gonna add a blend, blend angle correct normals node. So I'm gonna plug my base normal into the base normal socket and my detail normal into the additional normal socket and then wire the result into the normal output port on my root node here. Okay, so now when I zoom into um, my material here, you can see that I've got the nice tight crunchy detail uh, from my detail normal combined with 
the overall normals uh, from my base normal map. So this is how I am turning a 4K normal map into just one uh, 1K normal map and one detail texture. And I'm able to save a whole bunch of texture memory while still getting the same amount of detail because I'm tiling this texture uh, tightly. And I could even tile this even more times. I could tile it 12 or 16 times to get even tighter detail if I wanted to. All right, cool. So that's how I set up the normals for the snow texture. Let's go ahead and work on the color. So I'm going to hold down the three key and tap, and that's going to give me a uh, vector three value. And this is what I'm going to use for color. So I'm going to open up my color picker here, and I want to give myself a value that is bright, but it's not all the way white because snow is not pure white. In fact, there are no materials in existence that are actually pure white. Um, snow is probably one of the brightest materials and it comes in at 214 or 215 RGB. So I'm just going to pick a value here that's about 0 0.88 and we'll leave our color at that. And then the other thing that I want to do, if I just wire this straight in as the base color, you can see now I've got some pretty nice looking snow. But one thing that's happened is that my sparkles have disappeared. They were showing up really nicely when my base color was black. But now that my base color is brighter, it's kind of overwhelming to the sparkles. And so what I'm going to do is just come down here to the sparkles and I'm going to boost them. I'm just going to multiply them by a value of maybe like 5,000 just to make this emissive that I'm passing in here really bright. Now this is a value here that you might need to tune based on the brightness of your scene. So you want to get your snow into your scene and look at how bright it is and tune the emissive of the sparkles so that they actually show up in your scene. But I'm going to use a value of 5000 just for now because it makes the sparkles show up a little bit, um, but not too much. All right, let's go back to working on the color. We set our color to 0 0.88. But the other thing that I want to add is a Fresnel effect. So to our color, I'm going to add Fresnel. And what Fresnel does is it gonna, it's going to make this snow brighter on the edges. So I can just drop a Fresnel node in here and I'm just going to give it an exponent value of six. And if we just take a look at Fresnel by itself, what you'll see is that the mask is black in the middle and darker, I mean, black in the middle and then brighter right around the edges. That's what Fresnel does. It brightens things up on the edges or it shows us the relationship of the normal and the camera. So where the normal is pointing right at the camera, it's black. And where it's perpendicular to the camera, it's white. And then we can control this mask here or what the fall off is by giving it an exponent. So there's less, uh, well, there's more of the white color creeping in the lower this value goes, but I want to push it kind of tight to the edge. If I give it a value of one, you can see there's a whole lot of white here. And that's probably a little bit crazy for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to give it a value of six to just push that brightness right to the edge. Then we're going to take that Fresnel effect and add it to our snow color. So we're not quite white, but once we get to the edge, we're just going to go full white. And what that does is it's going to accentuate some of these nice uh, normal details that we're getting here on our snow. All right, so that's our snow shader. And you can see that we have nice sparkles and we have nice Fresnel. And we've arranged our textures so that we're we've so that we're saving as much texture memory as we can while still getting uh, really nice tight details close up. All right, pretty cool. Let's switch over to Unity, and I'll show you how to make the shader there. All right, so here we are in Unity, and I'm just going to right click in my project. In my project, I have a folder called Shaders, and inside that, I have a folder called Weather. That's just how I've chosen to organize it. So. I'm going to right click in here and pick create shader graph HDRP lit shader graph and I'm just going to call this snow. So I'll double click on snow 
and we'll bring that into our project and get started with this shader. So just like we did on in Unreal, let's work on our sparkles first. We'll add another, we'll add a sample texture 2D node and bring in our snow sparkles texture. And you can see that here it's showing up as red and that's because I've saved it as an R8 texture and it's only uh, in the red channel. So it's showing up here as red to remind me that it's only gonna be in the red channel. Okay, for the UV coordinates of our sparkles, we do need to multiply our UVs by three. So I'm just gonna add a UV node, add a multiply node, and multiply our UV coordinates by three, and plug that into the UV socket of my texture sample node. All right, so now if I wire the red channel here into my emissive, or emission, now you can see I've got the sparkles on my sphere, but they're not sparkling yet because they're just stuck to the surface. And so I need to add another set of sparkles that are projected in screen space instead. So I'm just gonna take this sample texture 2D node here and copy and paste it. And now I need to take the, now I need to create the screen space texture coordinates. And so I'm gonna add a screen position node and I'm gonna multiply my screen position um, by the screen resolution. So with the screen node, I get the width and the height and I need to combine those because I'm gonna be using them together. So I take the width and the height combine them together and then divide the result by 512, which is the resolution of my sparkle texture. What I'm doing here is projecting the sparkle texture onto the screen uh, pixel for pixel. So I take the screen width and height, combine them together, divide by the resolution of my sparkle texture, and then we're gonna take the screen position here and multiply that by our result down here. This gives me a pixel perfect texture coordinates for this sparkle texture. So now I'm gonna wire that into the UVs of my spec of my second texture sample here of the sparkling. And so this will give me screen projected sparkles. So let's wire this in and take a look at what that looks like. Oh, and I'm just need to wire in the red channel because otherwise I'll get red sparkles, which is not what we're looking for. All right, so now as I move this around, actually I can't move it around, but as I rotate it, you can see that the sparkles are staying put and that's because they're projected in screen space instead of um, being attached to the surface of the sphere. Now I can take uh, my surface sparkles and multiply them together with the screen sparkles to mask them out except in the places where they they line up. So wherever the screen sparkles line up with the surface sparkles, I'm gonna get a sparkle on the surface. So now you can see as I rotate the sphere around, I get that sparkling because they only line up every once in a while with uh, the surface and the screen sparkles. Okay, pretty cool. So that's how I do the sparkles. Let's do the normals next. So we'll go ahead and add another sample texture 2D node. And I'm gonna grab my normal map. And in this case, I've called it Snow NOS because it's the normal occlusion and smoothness. And I'll go ahead and wire the occlusion into the ambient occlusion input port on my uh, master stack and I'll wire the smoothness into the smoothness port. This is something that I actually forgot to do in the Unreal portion of the video. Um, so you wanna make sure that the blue channel here is wired into ambient occlusion and the alpha channel is wired into smoothness. Okay, and then for the normal, I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna wire here out of RGBA and we're gonna add a multiply times two and then I'm gonna subtract one. And this is expanding the data from 
the zero to one space to the negative one to one space, which is what I need for the normal. And then in Unity, we're going to add the normal reconstruct Z node. So that's going to take the X and the Y and compute the Z for us, uh, which results in a good normal that we need. Now, the reason that we did this is because we're only packing the red and the green of the normals, or the X and the Y components, and we need to use this node to compute the Z component for us. So now I can wire this into our normal socket on our master stack. And now we've got the nice normals. However, when we zoom in, the detail kind of breaks down because I scaled our original 4K normal map down to just 1K. And so we can't zoom in too close, which means we need to go ahead and add in our detail normal map as well. So let's add another sample texture node, a sample texture 2D. And this time we're going to add our snow detail texture. And this one is saved as a normal map. So I need to make sure that I set the type here from default to normal. And you can see that now that it now that it's set to normal, it's not pink anymore. It turns a nice blue here so that we can tell that it's it's a correct normal. All right, the other thing that we need to do is add our UV coordinates. And we're gonna scale this um, by eight. So I'm gonna multiply our UV coordinates by eight. And then we're gonna plug those in just like that. And then we're gonna take our detail normal here and combine it with our base normal. So to do that, I'm gonna add a normal blend node. And we're gonna pass the base normal into the A and the detail normal into the B. And just to get a little bit higher quality results, I'm gonna set it from, instead of default mode, which is the whiteout method of normal com combination, I'm gonna set it to reoriented, which is the RNM method of normal combination. So it's, it's a little bit higher quality and in some cases can even be uh, slightly cheaper. Okay, so I'm combining my detail normal with my base normal, and then I'll wire the result of this into the normal of our master stack. And what we'll see now is when I zoom into my preview, I've got extra details for when I'm close up, and then as I zoom out, those details fade away. Okay, cool, so that's our normal, and then the last thing that we need to work on is our color. So for the color, I'm just going to add a color node. And in our color picker, I can set this to 215 because that is the color of snow that we measured in our textures. And I need a Fresnel. So I'm going to add the Fresnel effect node. And so for our Fresnel here, we need a world space normal. And so I'm going to take the normal that we've created here and I need to transform it from tangent space, which is what it's in here, to world space. So I'm going to add a transform node and we're going to go from tangent space to world space and our type of data coming in is a normal. So I set it to normal going from tangent to world and now we can plug that into the world space normal socket of our Fresnel. And for our power, we're going to set this to six, just to keep the brightness that we're adding to right around the edges of the snow. All right, so I'm just going to rearrange some things here. We're going to take our Fresnel effect and add it to our snow color. just so our snow gets nice and extra bright when we're looking at it at glancing angles. Okay, cool. So now we've got some nice sparkly snow. We've got our nice Fresnel going around the edge. We've got our detail normals coming in when I zoom in nice and close. Uh, there are a couple of things that I forgot. We can see that there's these uh, sparkles here on the back side. And so we need to add the mask to our sparkles 
um, that makes them only show up on the lit side of our object. So I'm gonna add a main light direction node. And in this case, I need to negate it because I want the vector that's going from the surface to the light instead of from the light to the surface, which is what we get in Unity. And then I'm gonna do a dot product between that and the normal vector. And so this is going to tell us if our surface is facing the light source or not. See, we get a nice representation of that in the preview here. And then we're going to saturate the result of this so that we don't go, we don't get any results that are negative. And then as a final touch, we're going to raise it to the power of three, just to give us a smoother fall off here. And then we need to take our sparkles here and multiply it by this mask that we've created so that we only get sparkles on the lit side of our snow. And then just at the end here, we need to multiply our sparkles by something really bright. In Unreal, we used 5,000, so I'll just do that again here uh, to brighten up our sparkles. And again, this value here for the brightness of the sparkles, you may need to adjust depending on uh, how bright the ambient lighting is in your scene. Okay, so we'll wire that into our emission input on our master stack, and that'll be it. So now we have nice bright sparkles, we have the Fresnel around the edges, uh, we have the detail textures, and that is some pretty cool snow. So we could take this and add it to uh, terrain, or we could uh, apply it to objects. One thing that you might want to do is create a material function in Unreal or a subgraph in Unity, and then you could add snow to the tops of any other object. Like if you wanted a rock that looked like it had snow on it, ah, we could do that in a future video. In fact, uh, next week we're going to be talking about a rock shader, and then in the weeks that come, after I'm done talking about the rock shader itself, we're going to take this uh, snow and turn it into a material function or subgraph so that we can just add snow to any other objects and we're going to add it to our rock shader. So stay tuned next week for the, the rock shader tutorial and then we'll add the snow to it in the coming weeks. Uh, but until then, uh, have a good one everybody. Thanks a lot for watching.